every creator need to spend a lot of time giving an idea to the collector like how much effort that he made to create that an artwork and why his artwork value that much as well in today's podcast we have uh, melvin he's an awesome artist and he does a lot of things uh, he's also a creative entrepreneur and a creative director for a company called Riversand. Uh, he has over 14 years of experience working with big brands like Facebook, LinkedIn, eBay, and others. Uh, he's a design mentor at ADP List uh, and helps other creative in, uh, individuals. Uh, he's a founder of uh, M&N, &N, an art studio in Texas, and also he helps uh, his wife uh, with an online art classes for kids. And he's a co-founder of NFT Malali. Malali, Malali. <laughs> and I, I'm not sure how to pronounce this one. But yeah, it's a big NFT, NFT community. Yeah, it's like NFT Malayali. NFT Malayali, okay. Yeah, It's a yeah. big NFT community. And on top of that, he's also an uh, NFT artist. And actually his first illustration that was recently sold is now listed for 50 Ethereum, which now I think it's uh, $100,000 or something. So it's a lot. <laughs> I'm happy to have you here. Um, I try to, to list as many as I can. I know that you have way many more things going on. Uh, I remember you also have some awards and things. So yeah, <laughs> I don't remember all of them. Uh, so if you want to introduce yourself, probably uh, feel free to, to do it. Yeah, I'm Melvin Tambi. I'm a creative director for a data management company called River Sand. And uh, my profession is design and my passion is uh, art. So I'm coming from a fine arts background back in, and my original place is from Kerala, a small village in India. So right now I am settled in Texas um, with my wife and two-year-old kid. So that's what about me. And Apart from the design job, what I like the most is uh, spending a lot of time on painting, uh, doing illustrations and other stuff. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Did you also do painting? Uh, I mean, uh, with colors. Uh, I mean, um, oil yeah, colors, I do, watercolors. I mean, like actual. Painting. I love to do acrylic painting on canvas. Uh, I only know that medium, uh, so that's what I used to do when I am doing something on on the canvas. Cool. Otherwise, awesome. yeah, otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. So otherwise I'll be doing digital painting on iPad Pro. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I remember your digital paints. I didn't know you are actually painting with, uh, also on canvas. Yeah. So that's cool. Awesome, man. Um, the first question I ask everyone, it's, uh, about your goals. Uh, the, the podcast is called distance to destination. So the first question is what's your distance, to your destination, meaning What's your goal right now? Maybe life goal or business goal, whatever you prefer. And how far do you believe you are? So I'm on a mission, like uh, I want to uh, show to the world, like uh, through art and design, um, we can have a um, better profession. And I want to showcase the value of art and design through different ways. So I'm just trying to explore that space where I can bring more value to design and art. So um, that is my whole mission about, uh, that's what I would say like about my uh, mission uh, towards life. So I would like to engage more in uh, design community as well as an art community as well. So, yeah. And you're already doing a lot of like community stuff and helping other artists. So uh, I don't know if you can put like a, a like the end in that goal you have, but how far do you believe you're right now from one to 10, from, let's say? Yeah, I would say like I'm still in like uh, six. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like a great progress because I mean, I'm coming from a small village called Palakkar in Kerala. So it was a far, far stretch dream, like uh, pursuing a job in design and uh, to 
live the life that you love the most right so and that is going to that is going to be a profession and uh, we need to excel in that area as well so coming from a small village uh, it was always a dream like to uh, pursue your whole life based on design and art so considering that i would say like i can confidently say like it's six yeah cool and yeah i know i kind of heard i am not i haven't been to the india but i've heard that it's a little bit hard if you're an artist or you're trying to find a job in a creative field it doesn't they don't consider it like society doesn't consider it that much as a job it's more like a hobby so being in a village i guess that's even harder for you to start this <laughs> yeah so back in india everyone consider like engineering doctor and all those jobs jobs are the high end job and uh, art music and other things are like little sidelined and they consider like those are soft skills that a person can have not a must have so building any profession on top of it is like people will see it in a skeptical way like whether he gonna uh, succeed in uh, going with that profession so uh, frankly speaking i was also having the same doubt like when i was going through my third year in fine arts then i then that doubt got strong and i was about to finish my college you know like that's a time where you will get all the anxiety like how how i going to get the job and how much salary i'm going to get and all those things started popping up in my mind but later i figured out like um, when i put my whole heart into that profession and just so like design is more than enough to lead your life so uh, it proved wrong so that then i thought like i want to communicate how it happened and how any designer can uh, consider this job as a very high end paying job as well as um, it's not like a job for anyone right like for example you are a designer uh, if you are an animator or who or it is like it's not a job for you because it's a talent it's a skill so the more mm -hmm. you spend your time on it it's like you are spending uh, something on your uh, uh, something for a good experience right so i want to communicate that message to the all youngsters who want to pursue a career in this field so yeah that is the reason why i'm connecting with all the communities around me because it gives me a lot of energy like because uh, working inside a company as in house designer there is a limit right where you can explore your creativity or um, to connect with other people because you have like a 9 to 5 job where you have to uh, finish your uh, requirements based on the design job and then you need to find some time for the creativity so it's a it's a challenge so i thought to connect with some community uh, especially with youngsters like you so that <laughs> i can share my thoughts and we can have some dialogues and we can uh, improve mm. i can also learn and i can share my insights and experiences sure that's awesome and you're doing like a lot of things that you want to do much more. Uh, do you have a secret maintaining high quality on handling like so, so much projects at the same time? Yeah, I have some uh, uh, work format where I use simple things like timer, uh, like, like this one, like to handle <laughs> or like when I work on multiple projects, right? Like I um, keep on, things on priority like as you know like the the profession that i do like it's like a nine to five job which i have a clear idea like what i need to do what i need to associate with my um, colleagues and how to delegate the work and everything then after that i i have certain time for uh, creativity as well the one thing that i noticed in my whole life is like the more organized you are you'll get a lot of time for creativity so i recommend everyone who are the creative people right try to be more organized and do all the mechanical kind of job <laughs> in that time frame and find a lot of time for creativity so that's how i am able to uh, work more on creative projects as well mm, okay totally agree i think i do the same thing but i haven't thought about it i just do it <laughs> i just uh, <laughs> organize things in my mind and then do it so <laughs> yeah i used to watch a lot of mad Devella videos in youtube and oh, yeah. i'm a huge fan <laughs> of that person so <laughs> me too it helped me a lot like yeah yeah <laughs> nice and talking about goals 
I I remember you had like your big goal at Tilna was to buy a house in the U.S. with art, <laughs> and you succeed. <laughs> what does this mean, and how did you did it actually? Yeah. So frankly speaking, uh, the buying a house using our uh, using the art skills was so one goal that we had uh, when we married like 13 years before <laughs> that is a goal like i was telling her like whenever we buy a house it, it should be through uh, doing artwork or or through art or design so we were having we were keeping that dream and that was our fuel <laughs> for 13 years then we come to us and we started uh, working uh, i mean i started working for an it company and then this covid happened and i always had a dream where i think like kids should learn creativity at the young age and they should learn from the professionals around the world not from any local teachers around it instead i was thinking like people uh, the children should have a opportunity to uh, learn art or design like design principles from uh, professionals from adobe or who is having uh, experiences like 10 years or 10 plus years of experience in that field, right? So I was having a product idea around it. Like I was uh, like an iPad app for kids where kids can learn from um, uh, professionals around the world, like people from Adobe or Behance or uh, other fields, right? Or Apple, they can come and um, they can teach kids on uh, uh, design thinking, design sprint, uh, even though if I uh, talk about all these terminologies, what I'm really thinking is like uh, a digest format for kids so that they can apply in their thinkings during the childhood itself, like uh, the idea of mockups, the wireframes and everything, right? For example, if a kid wants to build a dollhouse, she can do a wireframe, she can do a mood board in uh, Myra or anything like that. So that what I really want to do is like kids should have that. Um, uh, like a visual thinking process and he can be an artist or a designer in future but uh, or he can be an engineer as well but you you just think about it like if 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 a kid has a creative quotient in the childhood and if he becomes an engineer uh, if he be, if he if he do that if he if he make a building or whatever right with the sense of visual thinking and art sense right or the design sense he can do magic so that is what I was thinking, and I was uh, connecting some product ideas with some professionals around the world, and I connected with some parents as well and some subject matter experts during 2018. Then uh, everyone um, came up with a big problem, like they told, like they don't want their kids to sit in front of Zoom or <laughs> anything like that, because I was suggesting Zoom at that time. Uh, so that uh, professionals will teach the kids on live classes using Zoom. So all the parents uh, opposed that idea and they told like they don't, they, they're concerned about the kids' privacy and other things. So I have, I stopped that idea uh, moving forward. So then this COVID happened. Then I told my wife like, why don't we start mm -hmm. it? Like, let's do a MVP, <laughs> minimum viable product. Right? So what we did was like, we simply started an art class for kids online and slowly it picked up like, and we done it through her uh, name, like Nimi Saad. And right now she's teaching for 50 students per month uh, in US and in Canada. And for nice. one year, like COVID time, we, uh, she was teaching the kids. She was taking the video tutorials. She, she learned Final Cut Pro. She started editing it. And I, yeah, as usual, I support her on, uh, every night on edit, editing video and other things so it was like a, a lot of work a lot of hard work but we are super satisfied because we can see the amazing art from artworks from kids and we were able to make some money as well uh, teaching kids around the world so then we were able to buy a house here so everything is through art teaching art so, uh, so nice. that was a big goal that we achieved <laughs> during COVID time so, yeah, I think feel, yeah, COVID changed a lot of things. Yeah, uh, like some things completely changed to the norm. I, I remember it, for COVID talking with companies that wanted to um, wanted me to work for them as a freelancer, but they needed me to be there at, at their mm -hmm. office or whatever. And I was like, 
yeah, that's two hours of community to get there and go back. So I don't want to do that. I'm, I can do it from home. And they were like, no, we cannot communicate correctly by through home. And it's now it's the new normal. Uh, everyone's yeah. working from home. So definitely I get what you, you're just saying. Um, this is called the uh, name is art. The, um, yeah, it's, the platform. Yeah, it's nimisa.com where we teach kids uh, live art classes through Zoom and uh, she uh, all the recorded videos that she had, uh, she put it in Peachable as well. So as soon as the live class is finished, they'll get the tutorial videos as well. Mm -hmm. And she's teaching on different mediums like watercolor, acrylic painting, prisma colors, and pencil drawing as well. And nice. What ages we can do the they start? So the so there are um, it's like two uh, two age groups. One is like five to seven and eight to twelve. So we are only mm -hmm. teaching only two age groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, that is it. <laughs> that is it with the art classes for kids that is happening around. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I wanted to ask you when you said that about kids. Uh, yeah, what's the, with the parents if there is any problem or something like that? But you already mentioned it. Uh, yeah. So the parents uh, initially see for. Uh, each class it's going to be like 100 plus kids uh, every day so uh, initially parents had a problem of uh, having uh, individual attention to each kid then we convinced them and told like this is the period where people are not craving about the individual att attention right instead people should work in a group and learn from experienced people and self-learning is a thing that we that we promote because if a kid learns something from a, a, a experienced professional, uh, they can uh, uh, they can grasp the whole idea. They can practice it. So the uh, so the idea of uh, more practice and self learning makes a kid much better person. That is what I think. Uh, uh, Respect of art or any other field, right? This is how a kid should learn things instead of. Uh, pampering the kids too much or spoon feeding the kids too much because kids are smart right you know uh, at this age uh, they're exposed to a lot of information and they're super smart kids and so they should they just need to get some ideas from a uh, uh, pro professional the more we spoon feed the kids the more they lose the identity in what they're doing that's what i always feel like so if you give an open space for kids we just guide them through the tools and the techniques and the materials and other stuff they will come up with some magical things so we uh, we started telling this to parents and uh, fortunately many of the parents understand it completely and there are kids who, who is doing uh, art classes with us for like one year and there are two kids who are teach, learning stuff from like from six years as well like she was she started physical art classes first then we moved to online but there are kids who is still with her uh, like six years or uh, not six years like five years like the, from the time that we reach here right so so it's happening like yeah and we are super happy about how parents take this as a uh, good movement uh, instead of complaining so we get less complaints and the one thing is like uh, this year we got an award from activity hero which is like a big online platform where they vote uh, they take vote, votes from parents and uh, choose the best uh, best learning platform uh, irrespective of art or any other uh, skills as well and we we are in the third place uh, in the nice. whole nation so it's like thousands of you know how many <laughs> online cool. and offline classes are there so from there, for, uh, we are in third place. And so it is a proud moment for us because a lot of parents vote for us. They put reviews for us. And and uh, that is a proud moment that more than buying uh, buying a house, that makes us so much happy. Like Because people trust in our intention and our idea. And, and they support us like anything. So super grateful for mm. all the parents there. Yeah. Cool. So nice, man. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Let me know if this is too much personal. I would like to ask about your parents uh, because you said it's in India. So, yeah, I know even in Greece, a lot of parents are like, you need to be a doctor or something like that or a lawyer. So, how is, you know, um, 
how did you tell them you know, we want to follow art school? Did they take it okay? <laughs> was it hard? Or yeah, it... that's a very interesting question, Chris, because I have to say this. Uh, my father is a farmer. Uh, like he is doing agriculture and other stuff. He doesn't know anything about art. In our family, there are very less people who do some art kind of thing. Uh, most of the people are like focusing more on education and uh, other technical side. They're, they're not aware about art. And even in my village as well, it's a small village as I told, right? Like um, they are not exposed to art culture or anything like that. But my pa my father, who is who was a agriculture uh, farmer, right? I told you that. Like, but he was very particular and. He always tell me like you have to choose a uh, choose your life which makes you stand out from the rest of the people. If you if you have some skill, uh, uh, upgrade it accordingly. And he used to uh, push me to uh, attend some art competitions. And I was a lazy fellow. Like I didn't find like doing art is kind of a big deal. Or and I'm not into education as well. I was a very lazy guy, but he pushed me to attend many art exhibitions, uh, art, uh, art competitions, and he will take me to many places. And then when this fine arts college opportunity came, I was thinking like I will go to hotel management or something like that, which can be like a, uh, uh, like, like a prominent job because I don't have this idea about art or design. Event, and I didn't feel like I'm like a, great artist or anything like that so <laughs> but my father was having a great hope on me uh, and he thought like i'm pretty good in art even though he doesn't know how to draw a single line <laughs> so he pushed me to uh, do art and luckily my relatives my father's brother he uh, uh, bought the application form from the fine arts college and he supported me as well and i joined the fine arts college and my father was getting a lot of oppositions from many people and they were telling like, see, uh, you are not giving a proper life uh, for your kid because uh, go going for four years for a fine arts college, right? It's not a good idea, but he was strong and he told me like, this is what you need to do, which makes you stand out from the rest of the crowd. And slowly, slowly, I also understand what he meant because people started recognizing my illustration skills and other things. And I also used to feel like a little different from the rest of the crowd. Then I then I also started taking it seriously. So what I would say is like my father take it seriously first. Then from there it transforms to me because of seeing his uh, his uh, confidence in me. So then I pursued uh, fine arts college, and luckily my relatives, my uh, uh, my uncle who is who was in UK, he gifted me a computer. And during my college degree uh, and i started learning photoshop and everything through google back in like 2006 i, I would say like yeah at that time i started learning all this stuff then i got an it job so my uncle gifted me that computer and my uh, father's brothers uh, two brothers were there they were supporting me and i was staying at my uh, my father's elder brother's house while uh, uh, learning fine arts so the entire family was supporting me and that was a big deal even though the distant relatives and other friends were not confident about what i'm studying but the whole family uh, supported me like anything so I, I was fortunate for that but it, it's not the case for any other people in india so <laughs> yeah. i'm so grateful Man, for think, everyone yeah that's so awesome having the support from your father and family that's i think yeah that, that's the first uh, uh, thing to help that helped you and even you said that you were lazy and he was the one pushing you so that's amazing <laughs> yep yep <laughs> and i lost my father on 2018 but then i was i'm super proud like i showed him so uh, like uh, i i made my life entirely through art and design and uh, he he had seen that success in me before he left this earth so i'm super happy about it nice so cool man. congratulations again <laughs> happy that you succeed uh, yeah. do you have any tips for other people in india or you know uh, in general that maybe they don't have that the same support 
Yeah, so the, uh, that is the reason why I started speaking about art and design whenever I get a stage. I'm not a good speaker. I mean, I was an introvert. Uh, I'm not an extrovert at all. But the more I see the parents oppose this idea of learning fine arts and uh, the kids are also, I mean, the youngsters are also not having that much confidence whether they need to pursue this uh, life, right? The designer's life or an artist's life. So then I thought like I should speak up irrespective of my skill in speaking then i so i was having a lot of complex and infinity complex right like regarding my language my accent and other thing and i always thought like i'm not a good speaker but then i thought like i should because if my if my father doesn't push me like this i, I won't be doing this job or i won't be pursuing my dreams right so then i thought like it's my responsibility to give back to the society and to speak up about this great skills of art and design and i want parents to hear about it and i want to see the people uh, and i want parents to see like with just these two skills you can make good money like how an engineer or a doctor make right so that's why i'm connecting with the community i spend a lot of time spending time with youngsters these days yeah nice so basically what your father did for you you're doing for the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah. You want to how push much, uh, yeah, how uh, I can. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> beautiful, my level best. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> really In cool. India, it's called like good karma that you need to do like whatever you get, mm. you need to give back as well. Right. So I believe in good yeah. karma. I'm not a religious person, uh, but I believe in good deeds and good positive thinking and connecting with amazing talents around the world, especially from my uh, place, India, and especially from Kerala. Awesome. Uh, I think we're going to go back to helping others, as you said. I want also to ask you about NFT, because mm -hmm. you told me that you have, like, uh, you, you recently started and you're already selling, and your first one is going very well, from what I heard, so that's awesome. Uh, should we start with what is NFT and crypto art? Because most people don't, don't know, I guess. Also, I want to say that I recently made a video about NFT. So if anyone wants to uh, learn more about it and what it is and how it works, I have the link in the description. Yeah, so I heard about people making a lot of money through uh, selling his JPG, a collapse image. And then I started uh learning about that thing like i like technology as well so uh then i came to then i understand like this is the great space where we can tell the message very easily like uh, because nft is bringing uh, a great opportunity for all the creative people around the world where they can directly sell their artwork where they can be the um, uh main person who promote their work they can be the person who understand the business as well and uh, kind of and moreover they can showcase the skill to the big audience right like for example if i have a painting or if i have a, a digital 3d art or whatever right i can put that in art uh some uh, art galleries online art galleries mm -hmm. or in portfolio right apart from that it is not getting any visibility but when it comes to nft space when you upload to some platforms like Foundation, Super Rare, or OpenSea, or anything like that, right? It's getting it like a global audience uh, attention from a global audience. That is a one thing that catches my attention more than the money that we make. So I started exploring more about NFT space, and I understood you need to work a lot. Yeah, so people get uh, uh, since they see the money that is coming through NFT artwork. Everyone thought like it's like a simple job, like putting your work uh, on NFT space and just sit back and you can see the uh, auction happening and you're getting the money. So and that is what people think. But when I enter into this space, I completely understand uh, every creator need to spend a lot of time uh, giving an idea to the collector, like how much effort that he made to create that an artwork where he belonged to and why his artwork value that much as well you need to be very careful and you need to be very confident about putting a price for your work as well because the collectors right collectors means who will collect the artwork in an empty space they look at your profile they 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 trust on artists first then they look at the artwork it's not the other way like so 
the art the artist should be very genuine person and for example if i am an artist if i am if i am doing paintings then the nft piece should be painting it should not be like a cinema body thing you know It's because when a collector look at my profile and he doesn't see anything related to 3d or anything and if i put a 3d piece over there he might have a confusion in his mind like whether i did it or some some other person did it so they can't invest on me because they don't know how how much i'm interested on that subject and whether i'll be engaged or not right so uh, so when i entered into the nft space the first platform that i tried was foundation and when i look at foundation i see all the 3d artworks there and all the graphics and other things and i don't know anything about it i'm just a 2d artist and i love drawing portraits that is the only skill that i have when it comes to art so i thought like i will i will put a 2d art and let's see how it goes so i don't see that much artworks 2d kind of works in uh, any nft platforms at that time when i started exploring uh, but i put my uh, first drawing there and i simply waited and one of my friend who who is into this crypto and other things he bid my first work and uh, he used to see all my activities and uh, how much i'm passionate about design and art and so he had that confidence in me so he did the first bid but before that uh, auction got getting end right uh, one person came and he bid it for like the double the price so i was like a it was like a super surprise for me and i was able to sell my first artwork for like 1 eth that gives a lot of confidence in me because more than the money right it, it's like someone investing on your uh, yeah. skill yeah that is yeah. the beauty right and he's actually investing i think on you on your as an artist not so much uh, in as an artist specific yeah. art mm -hmm. exactly like you can exactly. grow so you can sell it uh, exactly or have it and it's gonna grow yeah. in uh, price i guess in value uh yeah did you sell your first one for one ethereum yeah i uh, uh, okay. sell it for like one ethereum and the beautiful thing is like foundation opened the secondary market and uh the collector who bought my work put it for like 50 eth yeah you know, like it valued that much so i it, that was a beautiful moment in my life where uh, 2d drawing is getting that much value i don't know whether it will get sell or not but uh, a stranger person right who is trusting on my skill and putting it for that price itself is giving a lot of value to art it's not just for me it's giving uh, value to the art and design right uh to that creative creative field right so i'm super happy about it and that that one work made me to connect with a lot of people around the world especially you i know you were working <laughs> on <laughs> working for yeah. netflix and for the animation for the movie el camino right i mean i think that might be the reason why you connect with me seeing the breaking bad actually, illustration yeah actually it's my favorite show breaking bad so the moment i saw uh, this yeah. i was like oh cruel art and then i saw it's an nft i think so, something like that happened so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what i was telling to everyone like don't consider the monetary side of nft but consider about the connections uh mm -hmm. and you are from greece right yeah <laughs> yeah so think about it like i am in texas and i submitted one work in foundation you saw my work and we are connecting you are in a different part of the world yeah so, that's so, true so the beautiful connections that we make with uh, young artists and young creators around the world that is one thing that i love in nft so i started exploring more on that space and then i minted my second work and it also got sold uh, so it gives me a lot of confidence and i thought like i learned a lot of thing while uh, connecting with a good community uh, because uh, one friend uh like uh anandan nadamil uh he's like a 23 year old uh kid i i would say like kid like but he's super smart guy and he connected with me one day and told like uh, hey brother you uh your art is good you should enter into nft space and he introduced me to the nft space so uh, why it happened because i connect with youngsters like that is what i'm saying like uh, when you become uh, like a very experienced guy you should also connect with youngsters so that is a beautiful part happening to me he teach me how to uh, connect with metamask and all those technical stuff right 
uh, then I made my first work and he was also super happy when he sees my first work get sold. So that connection bring me some light in my mind and I thought like, okay, I need to put my experience and I need to help him to build it because he's a community person. He helped a lot of people uh, in Kerala. Then I thought like I should, I should also support him in different ways. Like, so then we started uh, uh, a brand called NFT Malayali and a lot of other youngsters are also there. Like, so uh, some people are very good in uh, managing the clubhouse and some people are very good in managing the discord. So we form a group and with my friend, another Nadamil, we started a brand called NFT Malayali. Malayali means um, uh, people we call in, in Kerala, it's in India, there is a uh, oh, okay. uh, state called Kerala. In Kerala, all the people we call like Malayali. And uh, so we started NFT Malayali. And cool. it was a great, great thing. Like now we are connected with a lot of people around mm-hmm. the world who, who is a Malayali. And we conduct uh, shows in Clubhouse and we teach people and we are doing planning to do artist spotlight and uh, the uh, the friend of mine like Nadamil, he sold 20 pieces in foundation you know how difficult it is going to be right nice we learned, <laughs> we learned many things like how to promote your work in a proper way how not to spam uh, collectors yeah so hmm. so there was a good people in content area as well like mahesh he's known like boho and uh, there is a technical person like Adib. He, he's too techy guy. He he's our tech guru. And uh, th- there is one person called Salmonium, and he's a very good speaker. Devan, he's a good speaker. Uh, I can tell a lot of names like Alvin Swali and all these guys, right? All youngsters like below twenty five years, and I'm connecting with them daily. And we started this NFT Malayali thing and. Right now, we have like around 100 members in that group within a short span of time. And many people mean uh, mean their artwork and many people getting global attention and many people are able to sell their work. So initially, there was like 3D kind of artwork and uh, 2D kind of work. But then uh, photographers also started uh, joining our group. Like there's like a very well-known person like Harry Menon photography. You can look at his profile, Harry Menon. Uh, he is a veteran in this field. He's a travel photographer. He also joined our group and he also started sharing a lot of insights to other photographers as well. Right now, it's like a mix of different talents in this group right now. So I'm feeling like I'm back to my fine arts college days. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. So it's a blessing. So that's how yeah. I see NFT space. Yeah. If someone wants to jump into NFT and start right now, should he get into the, the group, the community? Yeah, yeah, so we are opening a Discord channel and you can nice. look at nftmalayali.com. Um, I will have the links in the description so everyone sure, can sure, sure, check it sure. out. Yeah, I, I'll be giving all the links, all the clubhouse and Discord and the website links. And in our website, we put a medium blog where people can come over there and uh, they can see the all the basic principles and uh, ideas how to okay. start a, put the work and everything because nice. those are our experiences we just convert that into a blog nice i also love that you have started and sell your first one and then you didn't rush you just created the second one and you're taking your time you're not like rushing to sell a lot yeah because that is what i uh, tell to all people like consider this like an online port- portfolio for you which which reflects your skill uh, the overall skill so uh, don't rush because your two works got sold and then suddenly you put all your uh, works there and uh, uh, clutter the space with a lot of work and uh, collectors might not like it because we need to respect the collectors as well right they're investing on you they're investing some money on you and they want to see your uh, growth right so and they want to uh, put that in the secondary market and they also want to make some money so we need to put our best works there so that we should be proud about and it's, it's not a hype. So many people see it like a bubble hype or whatever, but I would say like this is a great platform where people can grow uh, and they can some earn some money as well and they can learn how people work and 
uh, it makes a if they consider this space like a serious business they can grow as a true professional as well that is how i see nft space nice what's uh so what's the uh, your idea for the what what the future holds for nft i think uh, this will bring a lot of collaboration when you look at uh, foundation right you, they introduce like split uh, the income mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. maybe i can uh, collaborate with you and mm-hmm. you can do the animation part and i can do the drawing part and i can collaborate with a musician as well and he can cool. provide the music for the project so one mm-hmm. project three people collaborating and it's very good for film makers you know like for example a film maker yeah. he can make a short video with the help of different skill set people and mm-hmm. it can be like an nft in the nft you you can put anything like people say like no you should understand the trend and you need to put the artwork accordingly it's not like that people invest on you right so if you have skills on different skills even in our group there are uh, uh, one person prajesh he is a sculptor uh, he do a lot of sculpture kind of thing and uh, he is putting his artwork there and we have people like elvin charlie shahul hamid and these people are like doing graffiti art and these people are these people put their work so there are different skill set of people they can put their artwork here irrespective of um, what medium or what platform or what so the only thing is like they need to uh, make uh, they need to promote it accordingly like it's it's not just like shilling all the time like uh, spamming the collectors don't do it instead put your profile properly show your progress show your experience show your uh, uh, show your passion that is more important mm. then then it, then you can sell anything uh, yeah, in the yeah yes it's similar to creating like a painting a real art i mean not exactly not, exactly you need to create your name you need to be on galleries and uh yeah it's going to take time um yeah some fine arts people they think like okay oh this nft space came so then i don't need to uh, connect with any gallery or anything like that i'll put all my paintings as a photo in nft and i'll make money it's not like that the more you spend on the physical space and the more you interact with other people and so this is a profession right for example i am a digital artist so the more i do the digital art the more i practice the more i put on other platforms i'm uh, i'm building the brand there right that brand value will help you to sell anything in nft space so it should go parallelly it should it shouldn't be like okay you you reach like this many years of experience then you have a lot of a lot of works in your pocket just put it there and sell it sell it sell it don't do that like initially you might get some uh, like audience or collectors but later they might struggle to sell it in the secondary market so we need to consider that we need to promote our collectors we need to support them as well yeah i also like that when someone is selling it doesn't matter if you sold your your art piece for a few bucks uh if the next person and the next and the next resell it i remember you are getting like a percentage of that i don't remember uh, yeah. how much is it i think it's 10 or 20 percent it's 10 percentage for example uh, the, my first work he put it for like 50 eth right and if he sell that yeah. i'll get 5 eth and so based on different platforms it will change mm-hmm. yeah oh okay so basically for the people that don't know uh, ethereum uh, right now 2021 uh, 50 uh, ethereum it's 120000 dollars around around that price so it's very expensive but basically if that uh if they resell that in that price you're making like five times the the money you made selling it uh at the first time which is exactly. amazing i guess uh yeah it's very it's good, deal, uh, right? good like, for the artist <laughs> yeah it's good for the artist and the, what i foresee is like for example if a independent musician or an independent filmmaker right if they put their skill and if if they have some magical work and if they put in nft and if they were able to sell it that money is good for them to uh, do their own projects without the help of a producer you know it's a, it's a very good opportunity for all the creative people see for example an independent musician you know the struggle right like it's very hard like to make some money out of it and to get some attention from the people 
but when he creates something magical and if he put it in a space called uh, in a nft space and if he's able to sell it that money is good enough to create a bigger project you know so that is where i see the opportunities popping up and they can collaborate with other fields and that collaboration is the other thing other good thing going to happen yeah the, the collaboration sounds very interesting actually <laughs> very interesting moreover the money right it's a, it's a very interesting project right for example in my last work when i do the uh, steve jobs work i co connected with a musician in india uh, her name is uh, lammy she works for movie uh, she works for some big projects as well and her album is there in itunes too and it was a very interesting uh, interesting experience you know like uh, i was telling her like oh, when i draw something i want to get that pencil scratching sound and i need that techno sound i can only say like this i can't create because i'm not a musician and she grasped it very easily within one night she produced that music and when when i put that time lapse work plus that music it adds a tons of value you know then i pay her for the work that she had done at that time that split concept or anything was not there so uh, for example uh, in future if i want to work on a bigger project i can work with her and i can split the cost and she will also get the royalty going forward right so there are a lot of opportunities in collaboration so and i can see photographers selling their works as well it's just a static image right and yeah one thing that i want to add here is like for example if you are just a photographer don't look at all the gimmicks that is seeing in the foundation or in any other platform right sometimes photographers fear to put just a static photo uh, because they think like they need to animate it or add something to it to 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 uh, cater it for a nft platform don't do that instead put your best work tell tell a story about it like for example if you if you put a landscape photography you just share the story how you uh, you just submit it in a platform put a decent description and then start promoting it like in twitter you tell the behind the scene like how you go there and what was the hardship that you had done and put some bts scenes put some video and other stuff so we are adding value to that static image and collectors are seeing it collectors are seeing it like a real photographer went through all these things if you're taking you, you know what i'm saying like if you're taking a photo from an iceland there's a lot of things to say right like if if some person is going from a village to iceland and taking that photo you know how my story is associated so mm. that story sells that static image so just go with your guts and go with your skills not nice. just go with the trend yeah that's what i want to say yeah yeah that's really awesome <laughs> um <laughs> I'm going also, I wanted to ask you about uh, the interview series that you're doing. Uh, it's called Abstract. And yeah, yeah, I was doing some interview series because I was struggling with my English. So I thought like, I want to improve my English. And uh, when oh, I move wow. to US, I want to learn a lot of uh, design things as well. So I thought like, this might be a good idea. Then I started this interview series with some uh, professionals around the world. Like I was lucky enough to connect with Chris Do. He changed my whole perspective yeah. towards business in design. You know, uh, he's mm -hmm. my mentor, and I am in his uh, Future Pro group. And whenever I get a time, I used to listen to him, and uh, he provides a tons of value to the people. That is what I am also trying to do in a small way. <laughs> how many <laughs> I can do? Uh, he teach me how to do business in design and other stuff. So I started that yeah. interview series called Abstracts. Where I connect with artists and designers around the world, and uh, learn from them, and whatever I learn, I convert that into a blog, and I published in Medium. Uh, nice. Then, then I was super surprised to see like Netflix come up with a show called Upsides. The same. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't copy me, okay. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like that, I was super proud. Like, oh, we had the same. One of my friend. In my team suggested this name abstracts when we th think about mm. this interview series. Um, yeah, and you have some I big was... names there, and I also like that in every interview you had like uh, an illustration created of the person interviewed. So it immediately made me feel that every interview it's quality because you're gonna take your time with each one. It's not like a bunch of interviews. It's like you're taking your time with each uh, person. Uh, so that's really amazing. 
uh the the reason why i do their illustration is because uh the see for example if i am drawing in your picture right i'll be reading your uh, uh reading more about you so that when oh, i draw that thing nice. i can bring that character like for example chris to when i was drawing his uh, portrait i thought like he should be very colorful because he is he always talks about design and business and uh even though he doesn't wear that much colors uh, on his attire or anything like that for me he's like a colorful person like because he adds a lot of colors to designers mindset right uh through providing a lot of different type of values right he teaches us how to do business in design he teaches us how to be an organized person in design so there is a lot of lot of lot of spectrum of knowledge in his mind i see it like different colors so the more i understand him the more i do the illustration it will reflect so that's how i do the uh, illustration and when i drew draw uh, drew uh, the designer who was working in facebook and in linkedin i draw it in vector because i thought like he's like a very organized guy and but then a uh, designer as well so i thought like his line should be little rigid so i have a story behind each portrait it's like a fun thing that i used to have it's like connecting the artist and going with it yeah i love that because i think this is why we need artists because they see reality in a completely different way yeah. so it's not like just a picture you can uh create exactly. it in a different way uh i i remember for example uh from van gogh the um uh, starry night hope i'm saying the name of the painting correctly which yeah. you cannot see the sky in this way but it was how he's seeing the sky uh, exactly yeah pretty cool man um in the interviews is there a favorite question that you like to ask uh that i don't know like how what to ask <laughs> <laughs> frankly speaking uh what i instead of a question what i would say is like uh whatever skill you have right uh for example if you are just uh skilled in doing some icons go with it like whatever skill you have trust your skill uh, become an expert there don't go with the trend like for example many people say like okay ui ux the product design is in the uh, super trending job right now but if you don't have that skill if you don't have that logical thinking skill but if you have like a very good skill in visual design right like don't go with that skill instead focus on visual design but for example if a ux designer who is very uh, logical thinking person and uh, he's he has that skill set but he's very poor in visual uh, visual design right don't go to, don't try to become like a branding person or something like that instead become a ux designer so instead of so many people fell into this trap of uh, trending jobs and they switch their passion and their skills and everything then later they struggle and they feel miserable later so that's what i would recommend everyone even if if you have a small skill if you are just an illustrator trust me you can make money it's not like you can get a good job as well the only thing is like you might need to work like 19 hours or 20 hours every day to become an expert in that field so just upscale your skill and trust in your confidence in your skill instead of jumping to different career just because of the trending jobs trending mm. yeah totally agree uh, and I, and i am part of a, a very good organization called adplist.org so uh, if anyone wants to connect with me and if they want to get any guidance on their career or whatever i can share whatever i learned from this 14 years of experience Th that might not be a gold or silver but that is a truth that i can share so uh, it might help some people so they can go to adplist.org and they can look for mentors melvin tumpy and mm -hmm. they can we'll have they also your link. yeah i i have uh, kept a lot of time for mentoring people like uh, spending it's a free session okay you don't need to pay anything or anything like that uh, i'm I'm, nice. uh, I'm 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 keeping some time for to connect with people i love people uh, so i would love to connect with people and i can i can help whatever i can that's nice man also talking about helping you have an art studio in texas m and n i believe it's called yeah. and uh, your mission is basically to promote art and artists uh, around the world 
<laughs> what's going on uh, with that so what i'm planning to do is like um so initially we thought like uh, we will uh, rent a studio here in uh, us and uh, we will collect uh, artworks from the artist in india and we will promote them and we will do an exhibition here and if we can sell their artworks we can give the money to the artist as well because basically we are artists from we are coming from a fine arts uh, background then all this nft thing came then what right now what i'm doing is like i am connecting with each and every uh, artist in india and i am trying to teach them about the nft space and bring them here and they can uh, start their uh, selling their artworks as well so i'm just mm -hmm. trying to help whatever i know uh, the technical stuff i'm trying to teach them as well so nice <laughs> man you're doing so many things uh yeah i think it's like uh, hard work so what motivates you to to work hard uh yeah so people think like i am working hard actually i am enjoying the life the more i spend time in art and design it gives me more life and feels like i'm living so it's not like a work for me it's if i don't do anything i feel very bad like uh, i feel like i'm lost somewhere or something like that i always try to uh, push my comfort zone at any time and it makes me happy the moment when i see like okay i'm in in a comfort zone it, it, it distracts my thoughts and everything so i want to uh, always in a challenging mode so that i like that factor and that's awesome it yeah so that is the reason why i'm engaging in multiple things at the same time and yeah, I need to take care of my health as well. I'm getting a little <laughs> bulky <laughs> because of all this COVID thing. Now I need to spend some time in health as well. That is what I want to tell to the uh, youngsters as well. When I collaborate with youngsters in India, right? They are sitting late and they are always thinking about ideas. I, thought, I told them like, little co be conscious in health too, because without a frame, you can't <laughs> do a painting, right? Like so. <laughs> health is important so that is one thing that i need to improve i am not that good in doing exercise and all I'm, I'm gonna take also the same uh the same tip i guess because i'm trying to do also the same thing like um i want that feeling of keep moving and not feel uh, comfortable uh this is actually why i started the podcast and youtube videos uh because i'm an Perfect. introvert and i don't feel uh confident in front of the camera so i started it because of that awesome man uh, awesome <laughs> but yeah, a lot of times, uh, like in the night, I will not sleep or eat because I want to keep going. So I need to also take your advice and <laughs> relax from time to time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am also learning, man. Like, yeah, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> nice awesome. talking to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to also to ask you, what's your biggest fear? Biggest fear? That's another good question. <laughs> Uh, so my biggest fear is like uh, the moment you see uh, the work, uh, so whatever you're doing, right? The moment you consider that as a work, then the overall thought process and the approach towards the work, everything will change. So I never want, I always fear like whether I will see it like a work or a passion. So <laughs> see from the, uh, the uh, full-time job that I'm doing for an IT company, uh, I never consider that like a job because I love design. Like I love there also I have like two uh, design members from India and the more I connect with them and they're youngsters as well, right? Like, so I love that process. I love con connecting with salespeople, marketing people and the developers because every day I'm learning something. The, the process of learning is making me so happy. Uh, but the moment if it becomes work, and then uh, I'll get confused, you know. Sometimes I used to get that fear. Like sometimes we might not feel like it's a passion. I'm not talking about the daytime job, but overall, like when, when you draw something and if you think like, oh, it's a work, uh, like for example, if you're doing something for NFT space or for a portfolio or whatever, right? If you, the moment when you think like it's a work, that that is a fear. Yeah. Like I, I should never feel like it's a work. <laughs> so I'm trying to overcome that fear. <laughs> nice. Okay. Nice fear to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice fear uh, to have. 
Totally. I will have all the links of your social media and the things we talk uh, in the description. But where's the best uh, way to connect with you? Uh, you can go to my website, melvinpambay.com. You might not see a lot, a lot of work there, but you can see the major links there. And there is a button called Let's Talk. If you want to get some mentorship or whatever, you just click there and schedule a nice. call there. If you want to talk with anything, you just click that button, Let's Talk. That's it. And Pretty easy. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty easy. And my email ID is also there. That's it. Nice. Uh, is there anything you would like to add that maybe I didn't ask you? Uh, yeah, you asked some amazing questions and uh, I never thought like this is an interview. It's like talking each other like friends and nice. so happy to connect with you, Chris. And uh, I'm super proud like uh, a person who is working for Netflix and for that movie, <laughs> El Camino, you con contacting me and uh, discussing about our favorite character, right? So uh, th this beauty of connection, I like a lot. And mm. that's what I would recommend everyone, like speak up and uh, start exploring your, start showcasing your work to the world so that you'll be able to connect with different type of people from uh, different parts of the world. And you can learn from each and every person you connect. It can be like an experienced person, it can be like a less experienced person, doesn't matter. It can be an artist, it can be a designer. And I always recommend all the creative people to associate with other uh, areas of people. For example, I connect a lot with engineers uh, because I'm working in an IT company, right? But I don't sit in a silo where I always connect with the designers. It's not like that. I always connect with engineers and they have that skill of logical thinking which helps me a lot interacting with them and they teach me how to how to know your numbers as well <laughs> i think all the creative people they should know how uh, the numbers which help us to understand things much easily and you will understand where you to spend your time where you to spend your energy and where you need to spend your passion right so that discrimination is needed in your life to organize your mechanical job and the creative job so those things I got an idea when I started engaging with engineers and other people. I mean, the right, right brain and left brain, right? We need to connect with everyone. We need to, you need to connect with salespeople because then only you will understand how to, how to sell your work, right? It's a, it's a sales yeah. process. Yeah. You need to connect with marketing people. Then you will <laughs> understand how to market yourself, like how to, uh, how to build your brand. So from each and every people, I'm learning new, new things. So connect with people. Yeah. People makes people better, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. what I always believe. Yeah. Beautiful message. Um, yeah. Well, the last thing that I do with everyone in this podcast in the end is ask three random fast questions. So you can answer with whatever pops in your mind first, and then you can expand on it. But yeah, whatever comes in your mind first, uh, you can answer that. Okay, I'll try my best, man. Yeah. <laughs> First question is, uh, what is the best Indian dish I should definitely try? The best Indian dish? Biryani? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Can you describe it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like rice with chicken and with uh, some masala and some gravy. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be egg and everything. So it's like a mix of different type of flavors infused mm -hmm. into rice. And nice. the moment you have all this combination, all this compo inside your mouth, you can, I think you can feel India. <laughs> cool. I'm going to yeah. definitely try it. Yeah. This biryani, it varies from different parts of uh, India. Uh, the taste different uh, is different, but everyone loves biryani in India. So that's why I thought like biryani might be a good idea. You, you cool. might need to try. Go with a less spicy one, okay? I'll try it, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. sure, sure. yeah uh the second question is that you're doing like a lot of things like nft art helping others creating managing people uh if you could do like only one thing <laughs> for the rest of your life could you choose one yeah i remember like when i was talking to chris and i was telling like hey chris i love technology i love design and i love art and whether i need down into a particular skill and i whether I need to go from there. And what he told was like, you can do whatever you want. Like you can do multiple things at the same time. And finally, you'll 
going into a unique thing. Uh, so, that uh, unique thing, and it will become one thing. <laughs> like combining all the skills and combining all the activities that I'm doing, and slowly it will become like a unique skill to me. So, <laughs> I am waiting for that. Nice. Good answer. I will not know what to answer in this question. <laughs> Last question is uh, one thing you wish you had known when you when you were beginning your career. The magic of numbers. Like, for mm. example, I learned it very late. I think all the designers, they should know numbers. The first thing, because then only you will be, uh, for example, if a designer, right? If he, if he, if a graphic designer, if he knows the numbers and if he is designing something for a business, he will do accordingly, right? Like instead of his personal taste or anything like that, he will be focusing on the numbers. Like if that business is making X, num X number, the designer's job is to make like double X number. So how to make it double X number, then the designer will think logically plus creatively because it should be unique and it should be logical as well, right? So that reasoning skill will automatically come. So, yeah, the magic of numbers. <laughs> Didn't it expect my this life answer. Many times. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, I guess uh, designer is weird, a weird place because, as you said, you need to combine art and logic at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah, in the beginning, you don't know that. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Man, thank you for being in the podcast. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Chris. It's my pleasure. It's it was fun pleasure. having you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let's meet again. Outside yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs>